Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since the earliest days of human history, the moment fire was first harnessed, people have also sought ways to control it. Over time, this effort has grown into one of the largest and most technologically advanced industries in the world. Modern firefighting relies on a wide range of innovative solutions, many of which were shaped by decades of experimentation and aviation progress. A major milestone came on July 27, 1955, when the United States became the first nation to use modified TBM-1C Avenger torpedo bombers as firefighting aircraft. Outfitted with 600-gallon tanks, these early air tankers dropped fire suppressants directly onto wildfires. This pioneering effort was led by Dan Reese Gerhardt Jr., a pilot and aviation executive whose forward-thinking ideas still influence aerial firefighting tactics today. The Avengers' role in this field forms an important link between early post-war ingenuity and the advanced technologies now used to battle large-scale fires. Among the notable modern systems is the Modular Airborne Firefighting System, or MAFFS. This is a fully self-contained unit that transforms a C-130 Hercules transport aircraft into a powerful air tanker. The MAFFS's assembly includes five pressurized tanks with a total capacity of 3,000 gallons, To install the system, the aircraft's normal cargo is removed, and the MAFFS unit is secured inside the cargo bay. Once in place, the aircraft's hydraulic system provides 1,300 PSI to pressurize the fire retardant stored in the tanks. The mixture is then routed through a dedicated outlet in the fuselage, allowing the crew to release it at precise altitudes over active fire lines. This capability gives the C-130 a critical role in supporting ground teams during major wildfire emergencies. Unlike its predecessor, the MAFFS-1, the MAFFS-2 allows pressurized discharge and stable flow rates even at various altitudes. A MAFFS-2 aerial supervisor or a certified flight engineer controls the system, which can disperse up to 3,000 gallons of retardant in less than five seconds. The use of advanced GPS and communications equipment allows for accurate dispersal of retardant over the required area, basically establishing a fire line from the sky. Coordination from ground units and lead planes allows the drops to be accurate and effective by relaying GPS coordinates and other details to the aircraft. When triggered, a powerful pneumatic compressor expels the retardant outer rear nozzle. Multiple discharge rates, ranging from high-speed, low-volume drops to slower, high-volume drops, can be set depending on the task at hand. Because of its operational adaptability, the MAFFS-2 is important in wildfire emergencies, giving critical support to ground-based firefighting forces.
MAFFS2 Unit and Air Crew Certification and Recertification is an annual event involving several stakeholders, including various wildfire agencies, CAL FIRE, and the four military MAFFS wings. The proceedings are held in Sacramento, California, which is a major hub for firefighting operations. The major goal of the recertification procedure is to guarantee that all parties involved in the MAFFS2 system's operation are familiar with its most recent features and safety protocols. Technical issues such as equipment installation, maintenance, and troubleshooting are emphasized. Mechanic training focusing on the correct replenishing and refueling of aircraft tanks is also conducted. Ground and flight exercises are included for air crews operating C-130 Hercules aircraft equipped with MAFFS-2. This training includes simulations of real-world events to assess their ability to handle the aircraft and the MAFFS-2 system under varied conditions. When wildfire increases, these certified MAFFS planes are called in to supplement USDA Forest Service tanker capacity. To find wildfires or predict where they may start, special aircraft such as the ER-2 are used. an elevated altitude single-jet aircraft that can reach roughly 70,000 feet in altitude. The ER-2 is a modified version of the well-known U-2 spy plane that was developed in the U.S. in the 1960s. Even though it is structurally like its counterpart, which is focused on espionage, the ER-2 is dedicated to conducting scientific research and environmental investigations. The Armstrong Flight Research Center, which is in Palmade, California, is where it is managed and has its headquarters. The Airborne Visible Infrared Imaging Spectrometer, or AVIRIS, is a cutting-edge instrument developed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration in Pasadena, California. It is installed aboard the ER-2. By taking advantage of the reflection of sunlight, the AVIRIS is equipped with more than 224 sensors designed to identify, quantify, and monitor the characteristics of the Earth's surface and atmosphere. The ER-2 comes into its own when it comes to the fight against dangerous wildfires. As it rises above the turbulence and smoke caused by heat waves, it offers a vantage point that is currently inaccessible to conventional aircraft. Wildfire mapping and data transfer to ground units are made easier by AVIRIS. This transmits information on the fire's temperature, speed, direction, and intensity, among other measurements. Fire hotspots can be identified with the assistance of infrared imaging, which also provides information on the probable growth trajectory in the fire. Furthermore, the ER-2 continues its vital function in the aftermath of the fire, providing essential information for climatology research and efficient forest management. It helps in the process of observing the regeneration process inside the regions that have been burned. The utilization of the ER-2 and AVIRIS demonstrates that aeronautic technology plays a crucial role in tackling environmental concerns, particularly those involving wildfires.
reaching fires quickly is another crucial aspect of firefighting. As a result of its capacity for transportation and ability to access isolated places, the CH-47 Chinook helicopter, which is used by the United States Army, plays an essential part in the response to wildfires. The Chinook is a heavy lift helicopter with two engines that can reach difficult terrains considerably more quickly than ground transportation options. It can deliver firefighters to fire lines in a matter of minutes which substantially saves time compared to the amount of time it would take to reach those spots by foot or vehicle. Because of its high-speed capabilities, firefighting hand crews can immediately begin the highly important operation of cutting fire breaks, which prevents the spread of fire. All right, do we need to hold it still? Helicopters can also be utilized in other ways to fight fires. A Bambi bucket, is an extendable, versatile firefighting system suspended from a helicopter by a long line. It was developed by SEI Industries and is used to drop water or fire retardant from the sky onto wildfires. It has a capacity of 72 to 2,600 gallons. Using a Bambi bucket entails immersing it in a body of water, such as a lake or river, and then releasing the contents over a fire. The water output can be controlled via the valve at the bucket's bottom, ranging from a complete dump for maximum coverage to a partial dump for a more dispersed approach. The effectiveness and adaptability of the Bambi bucket make it a simple yet invaluable asset in aerial firefighting operations. During catastrophic wildfires, fire evacuation is a critical component of emergency management. It entails rapidly and safely transporting citizens from dangerous places to safe areas. The primary goal is to reduce fatalities and injuries. The process can be complicated, involving alarm systems, planned evacuation routes, and transportation mode coordination. Due to the quick growth of the Creek Fire, approximately 200 people were evacuated from the neighborhood of Mammoth Pool Reservoir in one prominent wildfire occurrence. The California National Guard's 40th Combat Aviation Brigade used a CH-47 Chinook helicopter to evacuate civilians from the imminent danger zone to the safety of the 1106 Theater Aviation Sustainment Maintenance Group's flight line outside Fresno, California. This highlights how important military assets are in fire evacuation. Military support also comes to the forefront in other ways. During wildfire events, military troops, such as Army National Guard sustainment brigades, provide critical logistics and sustainment support to civil authorities. Taskings frequently include creating temporary shelters, as demonstrated by the Alaska tents set up in Chico, California, on November 17, 2018. These tents, designed for quick installation, provide crucial living accommodations for both evacuees and first responders. Collaboration with state agencies, in this case the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services, ensures that actions are coordinated. During similar events, in Butte County, the military's efficiency in sustainment and logistics, honed through rigorous training and operational experience, provides critical assistance. The Camp Fire incident in 2018 highlighted the willingness and ability of the military to respond to save lives. Fire has challenged humanity since the beginning. Yet, the systems and technologies developed to confront it today are more capable than ever before. 
from early firefighting aircraft like the TBM Avenger to modern MAFFS-equipped C-130s. The evolution of aerial fire suppression shows how far engineering and aviation have progressed. Advanced tools, such as the ER-2, with its precise imaging sensors, reveal fire behavior from the edge of space, while heavy lift helicopters like the CH-47 rapidly insert crews and deliver life-saving support directly into danger zones. Even simple but ingenious tools like the Bambi Bucket demonstrate how adaptable aviation assets have become in the fight against expanding wildfires. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.